You ready for this? Oh, yes, sir. General George Washington's lion-headed Cutto. Oh. One of only two swords worn by General George Washington during the Revolutionary War, the lion-headed Cutto was Washington's trusted sidearm during early American engagements. He was proud that the weapon was made in America, having been custom forged by a bladesmith in Philadelphia. Lethal in battle, the sword was designed for rapid cuts and brutal thrusts to take down an opponent. In the famous painting, Washington Crossing the Delaware, artist Emanuel Loitza places a more refined weapon at the general's left side, which he did not acquire until several years later. In reality, the sword carried by Washington on that fateful crossing was likely his lion-headed cutto. All right, veterans, welcome to the kill test. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I will take your weapon and deliver killing blows to this big carcass. Tyler, you're up first. Ready? <laughs> no. Okay. Let's, let's I'm ready. All right, Tyler. Your handle construction, just right. Your edge is very sharp. Overall, sir, this saber will kill. Perfect. All right, Gene, your turn, sir. You ready? Let's do this, Doug. All right, Gene, this is a heavy sword, very forward heavy. But when you have a forward heavy blade that you're hitting and meets resistance, a cylindrical, almost circular handle makes it twist in my hand. So probably this is the reason why the chain came off. But your blade is sharp, it will heal. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, December 25th. 1776, George Washington leads the Continental Army across a frozen Delaware River to attack the Hessians at Trenton, New Jersey. And he probably didn't chip his way through the ice, but that's not gonna keep us from our strength test, the ice block chop. Tyler, you're up first, are you ready? Uh, yeah, yeah, let's do it. All right, so Tyler, your chain fell off, but there's no damage on your edge. Your handle's comfortable other than the chain. You nailed it. Thanks. Good job. All right, Gene. Do it. <laughs> All right, Gene, your blade's edge is still there and still short. The issue is uh, the rest of your chain fell off and it's picked up a bend. I have less issue with that and more issue with this polished handle. It's just hard to hold on to, but it is strong and it does have an edge, so good job. Hurrah. All right, veterans, our sharpest test today is the Hessen Charge. This is all about what your edge will do to these dummies. Tyler, you up first. You ready for this? Yep.
All right, Tyler, the weight of your weapon does prevent me from going very fast, but you have a very sharp edge all the way through. Your weapon, sir, it will cut. Thank you. All right, Gene, it's your turn, sir. You ready? Let's do this, Doug. All right, Gene, to be able to maintain a good grip on this, more of the cuts I create are more impact as opposed to a slash where it cuts all the way through. So you have some cuts here that are more nicks, deep nicks, because you have a very sharp edge. And for this test, sir, your weapon will cut. Awesome. It takes a lot of guts to get out there and compete. I'm glad I did it, and to come this far is pretty amazing. I definitely got the competition that I was expecting from Gene, but I think it's going to come down to the wire uh, between the both of us at the end of this. Tyler, Gene, first of all, I want to thank you both for your service. You're both champions in my mind. You've already won your branch divisions, but there can only be one Battle of the Branches champion. And you'll walk out of here with a check for $50,000. And that champion is... Tyler. Congratulations, you are the Battle of the Branches Forged and Fire champion. Gene, your blade didn't make the cut. Please surrender your blade. <laughs> there's a lot of Marines out there, and there's a lot of great guys in the Marine Corps. And so for me to stand here and represent them is pretty humbling. Tyler, congratulations. You overcame every obstacle set in front of you. You beat out all the other Smiths, and now you're the Battle of the Branches Forged and Fire champion. That's a title that comes with a check for $50,000, and most importantly, bragging rights. Good job, <laughs> my brother. Please present your blade to the judges. I'm super excited. When this whole thing started, I had no idea how it was all going to turn out. Feels good to. I've represented the Army. The fact that I just won $50,000 is, is starting to set in. <laughs> I'm Sergeant Tyler Hackbarth, and I'm the new Battle of the Branches champion. George Washington's Kalishmar. I've never even heard of this thing, never seen it, nothing. Right now, my heart is just racing because I'm freaking out. The Kolish Mard was a unique dueling sword that became popular during the late 17th century and was a favorite blade style of George Washington. The weapon had an extremely broad forte, which gave the blade ample parrying strength. However, the sword rapidly tapered to a thin point, allowing for precise thrusting and stabbing attacks. An avid sword collector, George Washington even had a Kolish Mard bladed small sword at his side while swearing in as America's first president. The weapon was such an iconic part of Washington's persona, one can even be spotted alongside the first president in this iconic 1824 John Trumbull painting. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I will take your Kalish and deliver harassing cuts and thrusts to this big carcass. Josh, you're up first. You ready? Not really, but go ahead. All right, Josh, first up, it's got nice weight to it. Now, your handle construction. It is small enough to where I can get my hand around it, but it doesn't roll. Your edge, as you can see, is sharp. It will kill. Thanks, sir. All right, Dan, it's your turn. You ready for this? Let's do it.
All right, Dan, you have a very aggressive tip. The thrusting worked very well, but your edges right here are not sharp. I mean, I can even move it around with my glove. It's not cutting it. You can see that your blade took a bend. But overall, because you're able to thrust, this blade, sir, will kill. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test, our cherry wood chop. In honor of George Washington, the Kolschmar was known as a fast, light, flexible weapon. It was designed for the duel. So to test the strength of your blade, I'll be doing several tip cuts against that wood and then thrusting into it, flexing your blade in both directions. Make sure that temper's right and that that blade doesn't pick up a set. Josh, you're up first. You ready? Let's go for it. All right, Josh, there are a lot of pointy bits on this guard that don't need to be there. That really digs right into your hand. Other than that, it did well. It flexed very nicely and came back to true. So good job. Thank you. All right, Dan, are you ready to go? Sure, let's go. I commend your, your effort in making a blade that's that's very nicely uh, done, but the heat treat on this blade uh, has just failed. Um, I mean, I, I no longer know where the tip is, which is disappointing because I think you did a beautiful job constructing this weapon. All right, bladesmiths, to find out how sharp your weapons are, I will take a Kalish bar and deliver harassing slashes and thrusts on these sandbags. Josh, you're up first. You ready for this? Sure. All right, Josh, once again, very sharp edge on your blade right here. Easily cuts through these sandbags. It stayed true, easy to align and see my target and cut it, and it will cut. Thank you. Dan, you ready? Yep. Let's do this. Dan, when I look at the band on this color schmar, I won't be able to stab straight and true. I won't really know where the tip is. And for me, that's a real problem. I don't feel like I can test this blade in the same way I can test the blade before it. Because if I have to do any kind of corrections, that's not a fair test. Unfortunately, Dan, your blade did not make the cut. And for that reason, I have to ask you to please leave the forge. As, you know, like a period piece, as a wall hanger, my blade was spot on. But as a sword, just didn't make the cut. Josh, you are the new Forged and Fire champion, and that is a title. It comes with a check for $10,000. Good job. This is hands down one of the best moments of my life. Good job. Thank you. To like my wife and my kids, this just proves that you can do anything. It's just a matter of putting your mind to it and putting your heart in it. Ulysses Grant's Donaldson Sword. 
Donaldson sword is a commemorative blade awarded to General Ulysses S. Grant for his victory at Fort Donaldson in February of 1862, one of the first major Union victories of the Civil War. The weapon features a highly ornate handle and an engraved blade based on the popular 1860s officer sword. After General Grant's death, his wife donated the sword to the Smithsonian Institute in 1886, and it remains under their care to this day. Ladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. The sword was made to be a dueling type of weapon, so we'm gonna try to deliver the same light slashes and thrusts on this ballistics dummy. Paul, you ready for this? Oh yes, sir. All right, let's do this. All right, Paul, let's talk about your version of General Grant Donaldson's sword. The weight on this blade is not that of a dueling sword because it requires a little bit more than just wrist movement. But it is a great cutting sword. Your edges are sharp. Even with the harassing cut you can see there, cut deeply. And more importantly, sir, it will kill. Isaac, your turn, sir. You ready for this? I guess. OK. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Isaac, let's talk about your weapon here. What I like about it is the time you took to put these details that we were asking for on your sword. Every cut was deep, and not a lot of power is required when you're swinging something so light. But in probably hitting the bone, your blade did take a slight bend. But overall, sir, your weapon, you'll kill. Thank you. Paul, Isaac, you know what time it is. Time for the strength test, a fan favorite at the cringeworthy flex test. And we're going to flex those blades to 35 degrees in either direction. If you're still holding true, we're going to go to 45 degrees in either direction. Paul, you ready for this? Not really, but go ahead and bend away. So, Paul, as far as the construction of your blade goes, the handle's comfortable. We saw how well this sword cuts. You did a good job, but uh, if you look into that blade, you can actually see a dark spot on both sides of those blades. And whether that's a flaw that you picked up in the forging process or a flaw in the steel, I have no way of really telling right now. The grain structure on this looks fine, but having it shatter, having it pop like that, that's a big issue. Mm -hmm. Well, Paul, we absolutely hate to see that. You put a lot of work into your blade. You made it past the 35 on both sides, but you did break on the weight of 45, but you're not out of the fight yet. Isaac, you've got to survive both of the 35 degree turns, as well as the official ruling of 40 degrees toward the south. Congratulations, man. Thanks. Paul, I want to say thank you for your hard work. You have what it takes to fight in this forge. 
but unfortunately, I'm gonna have to ask you to please step off the forge floor. Thank you, gentlemen. This was such a good experience, and it was an honor to compete against such a good competitor. Isaac, we asked you to build General Grant's Donaldson sword. You performed phenomenally and built us something that is not only functional, but absolutely beautiful and stunning to look at. You are the Forge of Fire champion, and you just earned yourself a check for $10,000. Congratulations. I'm the Forge of Fire champion, baby! Woo! How do you feel? Cloud nine. Feeling so good. That's a remarkable piece of work, and you should be incredibly proud of it. Thank you. There's just too many feelings going through my head and my heart to really process what's all happening right now. I can't believe it. I'm feeling so good. The M1832 Foot Artillery Sword. The M1832 foot artillery sword is the American recreation of a French artillery sword modeled after the infamous Roman Gladius. Featuring a short and stout blade, the weapon has an ornate handle cast entirely of brass. Feathers or scales are traditionally molded into the handle, and an eagle is etched into the pommel to honor America. Produced through the end of the 19th century, the M1832 was issued to artillerymen, but more widely used to clear paths through thick brush and as the last minute lifesaver. When called upon, the sword was lethal in close quarters and was employed by disemboweling horses to bring down the rider, who then was finished in quick fashion. To find out what kind of deadly force your artillery swords can supply, I will take your weapon, deliver killing slashes on this ballistics dummy. Gun, your force. You ready for this? Ready. All right, John, first up, I like the beauty of an all-metal construction, and the Damascus pattern you have here is gorgeous. The weight is all the way in the handle, allows for a good recovery and forward delivery of strikes. Your edges are very sharp. Every cut cuts deep, cuts the bone and into the organs. And most importantly, sir, it will kill. Thank you. All right, Tommy, your turn. You ready? Get her done. All right, Tommy, let's talk about your weapon here. It is a beast. The weight of your weapon is all forward, that it actually takes a lot to pull it away for a second strike. But the thing that your beast does have is a very sharp edge. Every cut is very deep, but it takes a lot of work to control this beast. More importantly, though, sir, it will keel. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test. Now, why bring swords to a gun range? Well, so you two can join one of our two clubs. The Oh My God, They Broke My Blade with a Bullet Club or the Bulletproof Sword Club. So to test your blades, we've got our firearm locked in a vise. We've got your blade locked in another vise downrange. We're going to fire one round at that thing. It should split that bullet clean. Or worst of all, see that blade shatter. John, you're up first. Are you ready for this? Yep. OK. Fire. Four holes. <laughs> I thought I felt that you lost a hair of edge. That's bullet hung up on the blade. Awesome. You can actually see top and bottom where that bullet went across your blade. And you can see there's four holes in the thing over there. That's the lead core and the jacket going in different directions. So you split that bullet nicely. I don't see any damage to your blade. Well done. Excellent. Good job. Thank you. All right, Tommy, are you ready for this? Let's do it. Fire. There we go. All right, Tommy, well, your blade took some damage in that bullet test. There's a chip in one spot, and the other spot, you can actually hear my fingernail catching on that roll. Having said that, it doesn't feel bad in my hand, but it is very heavy for this type of sword. 
But as far as the strength test goes, as you can clearly see, you took some damage. All right, bladesmiths. Now that we know your blades can take a bullet, it's time to find out if they can cut. This is the sharpness test, the shot bag slice. Now, unlike the strength test, this is all about what the edge of your blade will do to these shot bags. A sharp blade should cut cleanly. John, you're up first. You ready for this? Yep. Let's do this. <laughs> this is what I love about your blade, the balance. It is fun to wield, it is fun to move around, it cuts with every slice, it will cut. Thank you. All right, Tommy, it's your turn, sir. You ready? Let's do it. Awesome. All right, Tommy, on the stationary cuts, it cuts cleanly. It's a sharp blade. Now, when I'm moving around and changing my balance because of the weight of the blade, it does affect the way I'm cutting. So some of the cuts are not clean all the way through. There's some strands. More importantly, your weapon here, though a beast, it will cut. John, Tommy, the judges have made their final decision. Our new Forge and Fire champion is... John, congratulations, you're the Forge of Fire champion. Tommy, unfortunately, your blade didn't make the cut. Tommy, this came down to three things. The weight of your blade made it harder to wield, its rough construction, and the fact that it took damage in the strength test. Those are the reasons we're letting you go. Tommy, you made a beast, but today it didn't make the cut. Please leave the range. Thank you, sir. Thank you. From here, it's just about getting better and refining my skills. John, congratulations. You are the Force and Fire champion, and that is a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job, brother. Thank you. Feels great to be the next Force and Fire champion. Good job. I'm super proud of all the work that I've done. I've come here and done tests that I never would have expected, put myself into the challenges that I never would have tried before, and I've succeeded, so I feel awesome. the Springfield 1905 bayonet. We'll be providing a Springfield 1903 replica rifle to you. Your bayonets must fit snugly and securely on your rifles. Developed in the early 1900s, the M 1905 Springfield bayonet was used by American infantry for nearly 70 years, from World War I through the Vietnam War. These versatile weapons were designed with a mechanical device in the pummel that attached securely to the rifle, while also featuring a comfortable handle, making it a very effective weapon in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Featuring a sharp single edge, a long fuller, and a false edge, this lightweight bayonet could quickly deliver stabs and slashes to an opponent. The bayonet is still used today during military ceremonies and can be seen in several classic war films like 1998's The Thin Red Line. Bladespits, welcome to the kill test. The first mission today is to take your bayonet and affix it to the Springfield rifle and deliver some killing blows on this ballistic dummy. Then I will dismantle the blade from the rifle and let's see what kind of lethal damage it will do on its own. Josh, you're up first. You ready? As ready as I can be. All right, Josh, let's talk about your bayonet here. When I affix this onto the rifle, it had a very nice match with the railing in there and your pin. It was very secure. Now, your edge is very sharp. It definitely lacerates deep into the bone. On its own, the handle construction matches nicely on my hand. Overall, sir, it will kill. Awesome, thank you. All right, Brad, your turn. So you ready for this? Let's go for it. Oof. 
right, Brad, first up, the handle construction. It is a little bit on the smaller side, but there are no sharp edges. And the flare you have here actually gives me good retention and I can get all the way to the guard. At first, I was a little bit worried about your cutter pin right here. It looked flimsy, but the minute I put it on, it wasn't an issue at all. It stayed affixed to the bayonet quite tightly. Your weapon is straight. Every cut was very deep into this ballistics dummy. Overall, sir, your weapon will kill. Thank you, sir. Bladesmiths, welcome to the strength test. The steel can stab and barricade chop. This test is all about what happens to your bayonets and not what happens to the targets. Josh, you're up first, you ready? Nope. No. Well, here's my finish. Josh, well, you survived really well. There is sections on here that are now not as sharp as they were, but nothing rolled over, nothing chipped out. I mean, your point is still nice and sharp. It performed really well on the strength test. Nice job. Awesome, thank you. All right, Brad, be ready for this. Well, my nan said don't break it, but go for it. Oh, Brad, what you got here, your blade edge took some damage. The blade's taken a bit of a bend to one side here. It's cheating to the right. But your point didn't take any damage. It's all in one piece. It's a nice, sturdy blade. Nice job. Thank you. All right, Bladesmiths, this is the sharpest test, the military bag slice. To find out how sharp your edges and point of your bayonets are, I'm going to take a stab at these military bags. Josh, you're up first. You ready? Let's go for it. All right, Josh, your bayonet right here had no problems puncturing the bag and slicing it to pieces. You'll cut. Sweet, thanks. All right, Brad, your turn, sir. Shall we do it? Of course, have at you. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. <laughs> All right, Brad, let's talk about your blade here. Wicked sharp. It punctured easily in the military bag. At the same time, the edges cut like hot steel on butter. Overall, sir, for this test, you will cut. Thank you, sir. Well, you both brought us amazing work. Only one of you will go home with the title. And the Forge and Fire champion is... Josh. Holy shit. Congratulations. <laughs> Brad, unfortunately, you're not going home with the win today, and Doug's going to tell you why. I commend you on your work. Your knife performed very well on our test, but it was also the only knife that took a bend on the strength test. And for that reason, your blade did not make the cut. Brad, unfortunately, that means I'm going to have to ask you to please leave the Forge 4. I understand. Have a good one, guys. Pleasure, man. Thank you. Well, Josh, that means you are the Forge and Fire champion, and you're going home with a check for $10,000. How does it feel, bud? I feel awesome. Congratulations. I don't even know, man. <laughs> I'm still trying to sink in that I, I won this, this. I won. A little overwhelming. <laughs> I can't wait to tell my wife. She had a lot of confidence in me from the very start. I'm excited to let her know that, hey, you, you were right, you know? I won. 